I took photos with a cheap camera and the second cheapest prime lens made by Canon. I will show you the results. I was curious. Can you enjoy photography with a cheap setup like this one? At the ending of this clip, I will show you the pros and cons and tell you how I felt. I paid 150 US dollars for the camera, a used Canon 1200D. It was released back in 2014, it has quite mediocre performances, but it's still a DSLR. For the lens, I paid $100, it's Canon's EFS 24mm f2.8 STM. So just $250 for this gear. Let's go on a photo walk. We will jump to conclusions afterwards. I started with the fountains from the city center, a place filled with opportunities. As a warm-up, I took four shots, just to get used to the camera. I like the tunnel created by the water, I like how the action is frozen, but I'm also enjoying the colors coming out of this camera. Quite impressive. As soon as I got there, I saw this landscape that reminds me of those old postcards. We can put a title right there because, by the way, we are now in Bucharest. Already, I'm starting to enjoy this camera. The lens proved to be ideal while photographing tourists. The wide angle allowed me to capture both the tourists and the view. We have three girls here and also three are coming now, where I decided to use a low angle. It's a bit hard with low angles because the camera doesn't have a flip screen, but I made it. Since water is all around, let's take a fisherman type photo. I chose this spot, I'm holding the camera steady and waiting for someone to walk through my frame. I like how those posters are positioned there, I like the fountain in the back, I just have to wait. These are fishermen type photos, even if I prefer to be a hunter, fishing also pays off. Let's change the scenery, we are next to a metro station. It's obvious what caught my attention, look at the shadows, some scooters were nicely aligned there. In that particular moment I got lucky, the sun was hitting from the right angle. Nearby there's a window that everybody uses as a mirror. That's not the purpose of this window, it just gets in your way if you're walking there. This person in the reflection, nice guy, subscribe to his YouTube channel. On the river, a small island appeared, right next to the nearby restaurants. I was surprised to see some vegetation. I don't know who planned this, but it is a good idea. I even found a nice message there, on the pontoon. Happy birthday, Yulia. That's what it says. So basically, you can take a girl there and tell her, let me show you my private island. And she'll ask, who's Yulia? I continued my walk down the river and found a parked car. The road looks bad, but the nearby building is modern. It's common to see these contrasts in Bucharest. I want the car and the building in the same frame, so I take a shot. It's okay, but let me get parallel with the car. I take another shot, but I kinda preferred the first one. Something was missing though, I want some leaves in the foreground just to accentuate the jungle vibe. And this is it, I made use of the wide angle more. Speaking about wide angles, here we are at the palace of the parliament, one of the largest buildings in the world. With the 24mm on the crop sensor camera, I couldn't fit the whole thing in one photo. That's a big building. I made some steps backwards and exited the parking lot. I left my bicycle there, look at it, someone could easily steal it, but the building, again, wouldn't fit in my frame. I still managed to capture something good there, like this electric scooter and the beautiful golden hour light. The building looks good in the back and, in general, this is a good spot for photographing vehicles. As I left the parking lot, three motorcyclists were also leaving. I had to make use of the beautiful light so I captured all of them in one frame. It's time to show you my favorite angle from the Palace of the Parliament. Behind this gate, there's a street, an access point. This time, it was occupied by this bobcat machine. That street was being renovated, and that's a good thing. Many tourists are visiting this place, so it should look good. Here, I found a pile of electric scooters, good for some abstract photography. When I first picked up a camera, I didn't like abstract photography. Back then, I wanted to give a meaning to every photo. Now, I see something nice everywhere, even when I look at a pile of scooters. The bokeh is something that I wanted to test. Can this lens offer nicely blurred backgrounds? I set the aperture at f2.8, I'm half a meter away from the focusing point and the bokeh is not great. If we get closer, of course, the bokeh will look better. Three things are working against this lens's bokeh. 
the APS-C sensor, the wide angle, and the maximum aperture opening, f2.8 is not wide enough. Still, I want to show you that you can get some good results with it. For example, in this photo of a flower, we have a nicely blurred background. And if we get even closer, the bokeh is superb. Look at this quality, we can even see a tiny ant there. At the Athenaeum, I want to get a good wide angle shot. I don't usually take photos from up here, but the lens forces me to think differently. And here it is. At this church, again, I felt inspired and placed it between the two shelters of a bus stop. I waited a bit for people to walk by and bring some life into my shot. Two on the right side and two in the middle. Perfect. Another nice moment arrives now. Here we have the long street in the back and the tall buildings. I cannot zoom in because this is a prime lens. I just have to think and act fast. So I waited for that car on the right to move. I took a vertical shot and this is the moment. One of my favorite photos from that day. The evening arrived. I went to the park and tried two low light photos just to see how they look. I like the colors. The camera though, as I noticed, isn't a good low light performer. I also placed my bike there and that's a wrap for this day in which I learned a lot of things. Things that I'm also gonna share with you right now. First of all, this is not a good combination for night photography. The Canon 1200D, an entry level camera, is a poor performer at high ISOs. The 24mm lens, again, bad in low light. The f2.8 aperture really isn't big enough. With the Canon 90D, the situation would have been different, but the 90D is a lot more expensive. Of course, I also missed the flip screen, but other than this, there are no issues. If you're using it in broad daylight, this entry-level DSLR is quite surprising. Good colors, easy to use, and quick reaction time. The 24mm lens, as I told you at the beginning, is the second cheapest prime lens made by Canon. Only the 50mm f1.8 STM is cheaper, but the pancake lens offers a larger field of view. Let me tell you something, it's not easy to photograph with a 24mm. A lot of extra things get into your frame and you cannot zoom in. You have to move more and think more. It forces you to get out of your comfort zone. But in three hours, I took photos that indeed interested me. Why? Because this lens kept me closer to the action. It showed me the intimate stories of every moment. Something magical happens when you're up close. You see more and honestly, you become a happier photographer. This channel is all about enjoying photography. So can you have a good time with a cheap camera and lens? Of course you can. As you saw, you can learn a lot of things and enjoy a lot of moments. You just have to go out. I really want this message to stick. You don't need a Canon R6 or a Sony a7 IV. As long as the sun shines, you can enjoy photography even with a $200 camera. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Also, if you have a cheap camera that you enjoy, write in the comment section. What's the name of that camera? See you on the next one.